Kia ora, talofa and welcome. I'm Dr Janine Bycroft and this morning I'm delighted to introduce you to Eric McLean. Uh, Eric is a um, medical specialist working at Waikato Hospital and today we're going to be talking about um, serious infections and sepsis. Eric, can you just uh, explain a little bit about um, if I'm a, a mum and as a daughter and as a colleague, what are the signs to recognise that someone's really unwell? Uh, sepsis is one of those anybody can get it. Um, it all starts with just a simple infection, um, in particular bacterial infections, um, but can, you can get it from viral as well. Uh, you have to think about who's most at risk, so young kids, the elderly, people with diabetes, heart disease, emphysema, or other medical problems that can lower their immunity. First signs you need to look for are really the first signs of any infection. Do they have a fever? Um, is their heart rate fast? Are they breathing fast? Do they feel weak? Have they gone off their food? Um, are they not peeing as often as they were? Mm -hmm. Do they feel dehydrated? Is their blood pressure low? Do they feel dizzy? Are they confused? Mm -hmm. These are kind of the things that we all kind of look at, at the first signs of infection. It's up to the GP to decide, man, could this be sepsis? Mm -hmm. And everybody should be asking themselves, could this be sepsis? Mm -hmm. um, so that's what we would expect from the GPs to look at. And then they get the labs and they check and see, are the organs working? Mm -hmm. uh, and then they assess for what kind of infection this is and if antibiotics are appropriate. Okay. Um, so perhaps can you explain what is sepsis? So sepsis is where the body can no longer regulate its own response mm -hmm. to infection and it can lead to organ failure and death. And that's mm -hmm. the simplest definition. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, the process that the body uses to protect itself, mm -hmm. it starts hurting itself mm -hmm. um, after a, a period of time. And that can be a really short period of time, or it can be days of an ignored infection. Right. So the three big things we think about is um, meningitis or um, influenza. How does someone differentiate between someone's got the flu and they just need to rest and they'll get better over a, maybe a week or so, um, and actually this is a serious infection or potentially sepsis or meningitis? Well, that's the real question, isn't it? Um, it sometimes it's going to be hard to tell. Uh, if it's flu season and yeah. somebody comes in, maybe a slight cough, slight temp, muscle yeah. aches, and myalgias that has a course that it gets bad over a couple days and then slightly starts to get better, right. that's probably a viral illness. That, that tends to be the course that most people have. Mm -hmm. But how can you tell if it's just a common mm -hmm. cold or if it's the beginning of pneumonia? Yeah. Well, things like oxygen levels, how fast is their breathing? How bad is their fever? Uh, right. What do they look like? Uh, GPs are excellent at looking at a patient and saying, ooh, this, this guy looks sick. So it's really up to the GP to figure out. You can get lab tests and see. Most viral illnesses don't cause this massive spike of your white blood cells, uh, but bacterial do. Okay, but as a mum or as a colleague, how do I recognize that my child or a family member is, is potentially My really suggestion is, sick? first sign of infection, get them to the GP. Let the GP make that determination, because okay. you always need to ask, could this be sepsis? Right, okay. And uh, how common is it? Well, it's very common. In this country, um, we expect to see about 10 to 15,000 admissions a year for sepsis. Wow. Yeah, so it's actually quite common, and it's increasing right. uh, every year. Uh, Dr. Paul Huggin at Waikato did a study um, over for a five-year period which showed that we had about a 16% increase in sepsis diagnosis, diagnoses mm -hmm. each year. Wow. Okay. So, yeah, it's, uh, we might be getting better at diagnosing it, yeah. um, and that's good. Uh, and we expect the numbers to continue to go up. Some, uh, we have also found that uh, like, uh, certain populations are higher at risk as well. Maori population has a three times higher rate mm. of being admitted with sepsis. Um, we find that people have a 20% mortality rate. Wow. Uh, so one in five people mm. will die from an admission mm. to a hospital for sepsis. Mm. Um, if you get admitted to the ICU, that goes up to 30%, so mm. one in three. Mm. So it's, it's, it's good to ask the question and get treatment early. Okay. So that you're, we're not one of those statistics. Gosh. So for um, the public watching this, and mm -hmm. um, what's the take-home messages about um, recognizing serious infection or sepsis? First of all, uh, get your vaccinations. Right. Um, that has been proven through all the literature. Um, they don't cause disease. Mm -hmm. They protect against it. 
So get your vaccinations, um, especially kids and elderly. Get your flu shots and pneumovax. Uh, the next thing is take care of any disease processes you may have. If you have diabetes, take care of your sugars. If you're obese, lose weight. If you smoke, stop. These types of things. Take your medications as your GP is ordered. And if your kids, if your family member, if grandma starts to show any signs of infection, get them to the GP. It could be something simple and easy, but it could progress to sepsis. And you always have to ask that question. Could this be sepsis? Okay. Fantastic. Hey, thank you so much for that. Uh, thank you very great much. Great summary. Kia ora, talofa and welcome. I'm Dr Janine Bycroft and I'm delighted to introduce you to Eric McLean who's a medical specialist at Waikato Hospital and today we're going to be talking about sepsis and how to recognise it as GPs or primary care teams. Uh, so Eric, um, take us away. What are some of the key things that we need to be aware of as um, GPs, nurses working in the community to recognise we see hundreds of patients every week who are sick but how do we recognize those ones who are really sick and potentially have got sepsis? Sure. First of all, good morning, Kia ora. Um, so sepsis is, is it's becoming more common in the community and we are more and more reliant on GPs and nurses in the community to recognize it. Um, uh, the, the Just Ask campaign has, is asking primary care providers to uh, ask the question, could this be sepsis? And look at the set of symptoms as laid out by the NICE guidelines in BPAC New Zealand. Um, to assess for sepsis with any infection. Obviously, infections uh, present with high temperatures, uh, rapid heart rates, um, rapid breathing. Sometimes their oxygen levels are low, blood pressure low. These are the real concerning types. But you also need to look for other signs, such as confusion, dizziness. Are they off their food? Um, are, they, are they not urinating? Um, and dehydration. Mm -hmm. And obviously check the labs and look for signs of infection in there. Um, it's really going to be very provider specific, mm -hmm. but they need to continue to ask the question, could this be sepsis? And if the answer is yes, then you move it along further on down the track. Mm -hmm. um, antibiotics are absolutely not necessary for a viral infection. We all know this, but yeah. how, do you, how do you make the determination? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it's really going to be up to the GP and the nurses to just recognize the signs ask the question, and if the answer is yes, um, then to move it through the pathway. Um, Waikato Hospital has come up with a new sepsis pathway, okay. and we have red flags and amber flags. Mm. These have been distributed out to the community throughout Waikato DHB and right. to the GP services. Mm -hmm. And it's up to the GPs to go through these, and, and sometimes it's the eyeball test. Yeah. As any GP will tell you, yeah. it's like, well, yeah, they don't really meet the criteria, they look yeah. sick, yeah, and that's probably good enough in our mind for them right. to ask the question and to move it on down the line. Okay. Yeah. So you mentioned the amber and the red um, signs. Can, in case there's others who don't have those criteria in front of them, can you go through those for us? Yep. So it's based off of uh, the sepsis six protocol in the UK, mm -hmm. um, and this was reinstituted just this year. And the red flags are your typical ones. Do they have a really high heart rate? Um, is their breathing above 25 breaths per minute? Um, are, are they anuric? Have they not urinated for a significant period of time? Uh, do they have a fever above 38.5? Right. Are they confused, overtly confused that right. you can see? Yeah. And their, their blood pressure, obviously, right. very important. Is yeah. their systolic blood pressure uh, below 90? Right. That's a red flag. Yeah. And they, these people should automatically be put down the pathway. Yeah. The amber flags 
Well, they're, they're, they're not as bad. So their breathing's fast, but it's not 25, say 20 to 25. Right. Maybe they're a little hypoxic. They may be at 94. Right. Uh, their heart rate might be sitting around 100. It's mm -hmm. not normal, mm -hmm. but it's not concerning either. Yeah. Uh, blood pressure might be between 90 and 100 systolic. Mm -hmm. uh, they might have a temp, 38, mm -hmm. 37, 9. There's yeah. the good one, isn't it? Yeah. Um, um, Oh, or maybe the family's concerned. Maybe the family says, you know what, they're just not themselves. They're, they're, they seem a little confused, but they may seem fine to you. These are amber flags, still concerning. And then that's, that still justifies doing the workup, getting the labs, checking for renal function. Is their lactate elevated? Are they oxygenating those tissues? And if they're not, put them on the sepsis pathway. Okay. We can't get labs very quickly in the community. No, it's difficult. So um, might be a referral to an emergency department to let them yeah. fully work it out. Okay. And that's appropriate. Right. Okay. Um, and what's the key safety netting advice we should get? If, if we think someone, well, they could go home, it's, during, it's morning, we can monitor them, we can touch base later in the day. What's that key safety netting advice we should be giving people? Always ask the question, could this be sepsis? You treat them with the antibiotics, you send them home. Hey, if things get worse, come back. Right. or call an ambulance or go yeah. to, to the ED. Um, you should be getting better right. at this point. Right. And if, if, if they're still not eating, if they're still not drinking after just a few hours back at home after initiation of antibiotics, it could be a sign that this is progressing on further. Right, okay, cool. Hey look, Eric, thank you so much for um, your advice and input. That's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you.